Hey, hi, hello. Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm going to be sharing how to create and use placeholder slot components in Figma. As always, before we get started, I just want to quickly share a little bit about what slots are and why we might use them. So slot components are not an original concept of mine. They're actually something I've borrowed from the Vue JavaScript framework and from other designers. And so slots are just essentially placeholder components that we can use to swap for any other content that we want. So we're not doing anything really super unique with slots that we couldn't really do with any other component because all we're really doing is taking advantage of Figma's native ability to swap component instances and just making it a little bit more explicit whenever someone is actually able to swap out content. The only really special thing we're doing is we're thinking about the components we're building and how people might use them so that we can add our slot components in meaningful and useful areas. Now that we have a basic understanding of what slots are and how we might use them, let's go ahead and dive into a little example of the current flow before slots. So on the left, you'll see that I have my master component for a carousel. In the middle, you'll see that I've copied over an instance of that component. And on the right, I've had to detach the instance in order to customize the carousel with my custom content. So of course, if I go ahead and select my master component, we'll see that if I command click on this gray area here, it's actually called content. So this is just an auto layout frame that's set to fill the width and height of its container. Of course, I could change this content to be whatever I want within the master component, but because I'm gonna be distributing this carousel as a component in a library, I actually need to generalize it so that others know they can edit it as well. But the problem is if I go ahead and select my component instance and click on the content layer, all I can really do to edit this is change the background color. We'll see that available here. I could of course change this to any other color I want, but I don't have the ability to swap this out for any other content. Additionally, if I wanted to add a card component like I have on the right, I'm not gonna be able to drag other components or elements inside of this component instance. Figma just doesn't allow that. So really, all I can do in this case is detach the component instance from the master. So if I go ahead and zoom in on the detached carousel component on the right, we'll see that I've now been able to swap out the content for my custom profile card. Of course, with this method, I no longer receive updates to the carousel component because it has been detached from its master component. So this is where slots come in. They're gonna allow us to be able to customize component instances without detaching them from their master components. So now that we've seen this little use case, let's go ahead and get started with building our slot component. So to begin, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a text layer here, and I'll just type the word slot. So I'm gonna press escape to exit the text edit field, and I'll go ahead and apply my heading five text style. Then I'll go ahead and assign a color style to this, and I'll just use text one. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and create an auto layout around this using the keyboard shortcut, Shift A. And I'll just go ahead and rename this to slot. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick fill here, maybe a light background color. And I'm gonna change the space between to eight and the padding to 16. I'm gonna go ahead and resize this out a bit and change the alignment here to always be centered. And I'll give this maybe a width of 320 and a height of 160, I think is good. And finally, I'll give this a radius of 16 pixels. From here, I'm actually ready to go ahead and create a component out of this. So I go ahead and select it. I can do the keyboard shortcut, Command Option K. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and change the direction of the auto layout to vertical. So that's pretty much all there is to our slot component. We could of course take this a little bit further and go ahead and give it a description just to be a little bit more helpful. And I already have a description typed up, so I'm just gonna paste it in. From there, I could go ahead and select this text layer again and just duplicate it, and it's gonna bring another text layer just below that one. I'll go ahead and change this to my body style and maybe give this a lighter color. And for this text, I'm just gonna type, this is a placeholder, swap me with your content. Perfect. And it looks like I just need to set both of these text layers here to fill container. And that's our slot component done. 
Awesome, so now that our slot component is done, I've gone ahead and brought it over to our components page. And one thing I realized I forgot to do was I wanted to go ahead and select both of those text layers and just lock them quickly. So that's Command Shift L to lock those. And that's just gonna help prevent us from selecting those accidentally. Cool, so I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom out here so we can see exactly what we're working with in this file. And we'll notice we have a lot of components here. So I'm gonna just zoom into the accordion and we'll see we have the assembled accordion here at the bottom with the heading and some text. Over to the right, we have some accordion content, which we'll be using a little bit later to swap in our slot. Next, we'll see we have a carousel component, which is very simple. And we have a card component, which we'll actually be inserting into the carousel. Finally, you'll notice a simple dialogue component and some dialogue content that we'll be swapping in. And if you've caught any of my other videos, you might recognize the component group, or even from my most recent video, you might recognize the CSS grid component. So in this video, we're really only focusing on the accordion, the carousel, and the dialogue. So I've gone ahead and just brought over my master components all in one space just so we can see them. And I've also brought in the accordion content and the dialogue content component pieces that are actually used inside of the master assembled components. So let's go ahead and get started. So beginning with the accordion, we'll see that if I go ahead and select one of these items here, I can actually expand them using my variants to reveal the content inside. So let's take a closer look at the second accordion item. It looks like if I double click inside one more time, I have this accordion content component that is being nested inside of my accordion item. And so that's this component up here. Anything that I want to edit for the master that has this accordion content, I of course need to edit up here at the accordion content master component. So of course, if this was a design system library that I'm distributing to a lot of users, all they would really be able to edit is this text here. So let's go ahead and add in our slot component. I'm gonna zoom out and we'll notice that I've actually inserted an instance of our slot component at the top. So with this selected, I'm just gonna copy it and command click to select my accordion content. And I'm actually just gonna paste it in. We'll see that because I'm pasting in to our accordion content, we automatically get to see it reflected in our master component, which is also using that accordion content. Once it's in, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to have a width resizing property, a fill container. Perfect. Because I still have the slot component copied to my clipboard, I'm actually gonna repeat the same process for the dialogue content, which is built the exact same way as the accordion. So I'll go ahead and paste that in and switch this one to fill container. Again, we'll see it automatically reflected in our dialogue component. Finally, I'm gonna swap this content auto layout frame inside of my carousel with the slot component. So using one of Figma's latest new features, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this component and actually use paste to replace. This is a brand new feature that was just released this week and it will actually allow me to replace whatever content I'm selecting with whatever else is copied on my clipboard. So of course I'm gonna go ahead and click on here but you could do the keyboard shortcut Command Shift V. We'll see that now the content auto layout frame has been replaced by the slot component and once it's in, I'm gonna go ahead and just switch that to fill container for the width resizing property. From here, I'm actually just gonna scroll down a little bit where I have my component instance examples and I'll just go ahead and center those. So now we'll see that each of my component instances for the accordion, the carousel, and the dialogue have all been updated to have the slot inside. So from here, all I have to do is select the slot component and using Figma's native instance swapper capabilities, I can just click on the slot and search for my sample accordion content. It's the first one, and I'll go ahead and enter that. Now, because I have all of this great content here, I can actually hide this text layer if I don't need that anymore. Next, let's go ahead and do the carousel. So similarly, I can select the slot component and go back to the instance swapper, and this time I will search for card. It's gonna be the profile card. So I'll go ahead and enter that, and we'll see it's been automatically swapped in exactly where I want it. 
Finally, I'll go ahead and select the dialogues slot component. And again, using the instance swapper, I'm going to search for sample and I'll select the sample dialogue content. I'll go ahead and remove this text here since I don't need that anymore. And of course, we'll see that now we have all of the form fields inside of our dialogue component. So let's go back to our accordion for a second. I'll go ahead and zoom in here and we'll see if I were to expand one of these items here, we will see the slot already within that accordion item. So because we added it at the accordion content level, we're going to be able to swap this out with any other component that we want. And it's built into every single accordion item. So let's go ahead and resize this. We can see that as I resize it here, it's automatically responding. And that's because I have responsiveness built into the entire accordion there. Same thing with our carousel. I'm going to go ahead and just resize this. We'll see that the width is automatically adjusting. And of course, if I were to add another line of text, it will wrap and continue to grow. And finally, let's say that we begin typing our message. Our dialog is also growing. So for each one of these, we'll see that as I select them, they are still totally intact component instances. There has been nothing detached about these. So now, of course, if I were to edit the master components, I'll still be able to receive all of the updates needed. So let's go ahead and demo that real quick. If I just come back up to the master here, let's say that we wanted to change the padding on our accordion from 12 to 32, just so we can really see it. It's automatically reflected in our component instance with our slot still intact. And that's pretty much it for our slot component. So I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to check out my text input group component video and my CSS grid component video to find out even more cool and interesting ways of how to use the slot component. And of course, please let me know in the comments below if you've already been using this technique or if you're already thinking of interesting new ways to use this technique in your workflow. I hope you all have a happy day and I'll see you next time.